asked Oggy, a human paladin, was journeying alone. They soon met a cheery half orc bar known as Tan, who was working on a ship. As the group began to make conversation, they heard a discovered a teeming druid stowaway called Val. Suddenly they were alerted to a commotion above, as a number of passengers and crew began to climb over the sides of the ship straight into the ocean, compelled to jump to their deaths by a hypnotic sea creature called a Rusalka. The newly formed group banded together and defeated the creature. Upon reaching the city of Balashi, they began to explore. They met Mimi, an upbeat seamstress in Tony, a Rakshasa sorcerer who owned an illicit store selling magical items. Illicit because only members of the local Magic Users Guild had permission to perform magic. Later that evening, the group attended a lively festival where Nora encountered a half elf sorcerer named Nal. The evening took a dark turn where the group had stumbled across a rotting corpse and were promptly arrested by the authorities. Unable to provide any information, the group was confined to a cell where they met a grumpy prisoner called Axel. Suddenly, the dungeon walls exploded inwards and everyone was broken out by the thistle winds, Axel's band of criminal friends. Now on the run, the two groups joined forces on a particular mission to steal a special vase from the mad wizard Giltry. Upon breaking into Giltry's home, they found a large beast called a quaggan guarding the vase. The sluggish creature called itself Fu and taught only in riddles. In frustration, Ren threatened Fu with an arrow, successfully prompting the quarry to move out of the way, but he immediately felt guilty, threatening such an innocent creature. Taking pity on Fu, the group decided to help it escape the wizard's irresponsible custody. When the mad wizard returned home, the gang defeated him together, and Fu took his revenge by eating him whole. Val the Tiefling had a strange turn that caused her to be unusually aggressive towards the group and made her eyes glow blood red, but it passed as quickly as it came. Our group then followed the thistle winds to deliver the vase to a mysterious benefactor. They were led to a spooky underground lair where they met the terrifying Black Widow until she was revealed to be Nali, the sorceress in disguise. That the Thistle Winds were actually members of the Magic Users Guild, and Axel was Nali's twin brother in disguise as well. The events had taken place since the prison break had been a test to see if the group were eligible to join the guild, and surprisingly, they had passed. Our group were then told they could either face arrest and be sentenced to prison, or join the Magic Guild, so they chose the latter. They all then made their journey to the guild headquarters, where they were given lodgings and met other eccentric members of the organisation. The momentary peace did not last long, however. The gang awoke on the first morning at the guild to find Ren had left them, leaving behind only a letter addressed to Nora. He told her that she was free of any servitude she felt towards him and that she should continue on with their newfound friends. Ren was soon found unconscious in the garden, having succumbed to a dangerous disease known as a blackened dream which could only be cured with an ether flower from the Feywild. So Nora, accompanied by Oggy, Tam and Val, journeyed to the Feywild via a special portal to bring back the cure. They met an ally named Carly in the Feywild who guided them to the Forest of Contrast, where they battled against four giant wood lice before finally finding what they sought. They returned to the guild only just in time to save Ren, who had been experiencing vivid fever dreams in a hell of his own. When he finally awoke, Ren and Nora spoke for a long time as he learned more about their history, and thanks to some very unsettled eavesdropping from Oggy and Tam, the rest of the group did too. It was revealed that Ren was the youngest son of the Angalian family, cruel nobles who had previously ruled over the northern city of Highgash until they were violently overthrown some years before. Nora had been working as a family librarian at the time and helped Ren escape the night the Angalian house fell. The pair have been on the run ever since and have fled south as far from their homeland as possible. They were anxious to keep their identities hidden, and their fellow party members promised to keep their secret. The gang still needed to figure out who had cast Ren with the disease that nearly killed him. He informed the group that before being struck down in the garden, he remembered an old woman approaching him who was not part of the guild. He also recalled from his fever dream an elven woman with black skin and white hair who had said, Find me, where the land and the sea meet the north and the snow. After some intense research, they discovered that the woman might have been Lady Silverhair, a drow goddess of moonlight beauty singing and dancing. 
Her chaotic evil brother, also known as the Lord of Shadow, was a drow deity of shadow magic and thievery. Both deities were involved in a battle among the gods. However, an important page was torn from the book, halting their research any further. The group discussed the possibility of following the strange words of the drow goddess and travelling north, but they knew how dangerous it would be for Nora and Ren. As Ren grew more and more restless, confined within the guild headquarters, the group made the decision to take on a new mission. Their task was to infiltrate and disband an animal smuggling ring that had been active for about a year, selling magical animals on the black market. The group they sought was a two-day ride away, so the gang travelled into the Lashie once more to purchase horses, and through a comically bad insight, they ended up buying two giraffes instead. The group then began the pursuit of these smugglers. Ren scouted ahead to find the smugglers' camp, which included cages and cages of magical beasts in their sleeping form of the smugglers. Ren managed to unlock the cage of a great black stag named Morose. However, the now awake smugglers ambushed the group and a brutal fight ensued that nearly resulted in the deaths of both Tam and Ogni. However, Values had endured magic to change forms into a wolf and ruthlessly attack the enemies, assisted by the Black Stag. Yet Val did not seem in control of her druid form and also ended up attacking Tam, her blood-red eyes returning again. The gang eventually killed all of the smugglers except for a scout who they took prisoner and one other smuggler who escaped along with the group's two giraffes. Men and Nora returned to the smugglers' camp to free the rest of the magical creatures but one of these creatures, a harpy, flew back to where the others rested and slit the scout's throat. Determined to get the giraffes back, the group rested and then pursued the remaining smuggler. They came across an arcane doorway and after some debate about how to continue, leading to some inner party tension, they entered to find a vast underground cavernous city called the Underbrush. Just as they began to explore the city, they met a chirpy halfling barbarian named Nedda, who was on a quest to retrieve her lost memories. With some difficulty, they were able to locate a large crystal in the centre of the city that had magical properties which gave Nedda her memories back. Once the group had left the cavern, Ren stealthed back touched the crystal himself, reliving painful memories that left him visibly shaken. The group then found lodgings and explored the city some more, and around this time they also set in on a name for their company, the Tavern Alliance. While walking through the streets of the underbrush, Nora attracted a great deal of attention. Apparently she looked a great deal like the king's missing daughter Kayleen, who had been gone without a word for two years now. Brushing the stairs aside, Tavern decided to attend a festival that was happening in the city. Tam and Oggy entered a race and tied in first place, while the others explored various activities and games. In an effort to discover more information, Ren showed the crest belonging to the dead scout to a citizen. The citizen then took the crest and left in a hurry. Soon afterwards, the king of the underbrush, Alistair, gave a speech to all in attendance. He had just been given tangible proof by way of a guild crest, one Ren had passed on, but his beloved daughter Kayleen had returned. Realising the great danger they were in, the group went back to their lodgings to decide what to do next, and after lots of debate, with some singing in the rain from Nora, they set out on finding the smugglers' headquarters. After some investigation, they found two carts and rails leading to a deep cavern, and after fighting some goblinoid creatures and a fire monster in a dangerous cart journey, they made it to the entrance of the smugglers' guild. Upon walking into the group headquarters, the group saw rows and rows and rows of animals in cages, and after some eavesdropping, they made themselves known to a group of guilds people. A woman named Sarah embraced Nora, calling her Kayleen and saying how pleased she was to have her best friend back. With some quick thinking, Nora went along with it, pretending to be Kayleen, who had amnesia. This group also included an orc named Gilm, who recognised Tan. They said that he used to adventure with her father. Sarah persuaded the group to follow her to Kayleen's old room, which she hoped would jog her friend's memory. She left to find Kayleen's parents, and the gang knew they needed to figure out a plan and fast. While investigating the room and trying to find out what to do next, a goblin bard named Gilf entered the picture. He immediately saw through Nora's charade and offered to help the group. Tavern agreed to trust their mysterious new ally, some more reluctantly than others, and they retired to his quarters. As a courtesan with friends in high places, Gilf offered the group intelligence and support, 
claiming that their interests aligned. Which brings us up to now. The group are at a crossroads. Will they stay and continue to covertly investigate? Will they capitalise on Nora's resemblance to Kayleen and try to infiltrate the court? Or will they attempt to escape the underbrush altogether? Stay with us in D20 Era to find out. The story of our group begins at sea. An elven ranger called Ren and his human companion Nora the Wizard have been travelling together for some time, whilst Oggy, a human paladin, was journeying alone. They soon met a cheery half-orc bard known as Tan who was working on the ship. As the group began to make conversation, they heard a sound from below deck, and after some investigation, discovered a tiefling druid stowaway called Thal. Suddenly, they were alerted to a commotion above, as a number of passengers and crew began to climb over the sides of the ship straight into the ocean, compelled to jump to their deaths by a hypnotic sea creature called a Rusalka. The newly formed group banded together and defeated the creature. Upon reaching the city of Balashi, they began to explore. They met Nimi, an upbeat seamstress in Tony, a Rakshasa sorcerer who owned an illicit store selling magical items. Illicit because only members of the local magic users guild had permission to perform magic. Later that evening, the group attended a lively festival where Nora encountered a half elf sorcerer named Nal. The evening took a dark turn where the group had stumbled across a rotting corpse and were promptly arrested by the authorities. Unable to provide any information, the group was confined to a cell where they met a grumpy prisoner called Axel. Suddenly, the dungeon walls exploded inwards and everyone was broken out by the thistle winds. Axel's band of criminal friends. Now on the run, the two groups join forces on a particular mission to steal a special vase from the mad wizard Giltry. Upon breaking into Giltry's home, they found a large beast called a quaggan guarding the vase. The sluggish creature called itself Fu and taught only in riddles. In frustration, Ren threatened Fu with an arrow successfully prompting the quarry to move out of the way but he immediately felt guilty for threatening such an innocent creature. Taking pity on Fu, the group decided to help it escape the wizard's irresponsible custody. When the mad wizard returned home, the gang defeated him together and Fu took his revenge by eating him whole. Val and Tiefling, our group, then followed the thistle winds to deliver the vase to a mysterious benefactor. They were led to a spooky underground lair met the terrifying Black Widow until she was revealed to be Nali, the sorceress in disguise, and that the Thistlewinds were actually members of the Magic Users Guild, and Axel was Nali's twin brother in disguise as well. The events had taken place since the prison break had been a test to see if the group were eligible to join the guild, and surprisingly they had passed. Our group were then told they could either face arrest, be sentenced to prison, or join the Magic Guild, so they chose the latter. They all then made their journey to the guild headquarters, where they were given lodgings and met other eccentric members of the organisation. The momentary peace did not last long, however. The gang awoke on their first morning at the guild to find Ren had left them, leaving behind only a letter addressed to Nora. He told her that she was free of any servitude she felt towards him and that she should continue on with their newfound friends. Ren was soon found unconscious in the garden, having succumbed to a dangerous disease known as a blackened dream which could only be cured with an ether flower from the Feywild. So Nora, accompanied by Oggy, Tam and Val, journeyed to the Feywild via a special portal to bring back the cure. They met an ally named Carly in the Feywild who guided them to the Forest of Contrast, where they battled against four giant wood lice before finally finding what they sought. They returned to the guild only just in time to save Ren, who had been experiencing vivid fever dreams in a hell of his own. When he finally awoke, Ren and Nora spoke for a long time as he learned more about their history, and thanks to some very unsettled leaves dropping from Oggy and Tam, the rest of the group did too. It was revealed that Ren is the youngest son of the Angalian family, cruel nobles who had previously ruled over the northern city of Highgash until they were violently overthrown seven years before. Nora had been working as a family librarian at the time. <laughs> we're good! <laughs> <laughs> You're muted, hon. <laughs> You're muted. Hi. Hi. I'm 
I'm Alice. I play the town of the heart with the worst internet. Oh. Okay. <laughs> my name's Jez, and I play for the human wizard. Uh, my name's Jules, and I play Ren, the elven ranger. My name is Maddie. I play Val, the tiefling druid. And my name is Miller, and I play Agnew, a human paladin. Starting off with the, the bad thing that happened to me. We're having fun. Um, so, before we get started, we just have very, very few announcements. The biggest one being this amazing overlay. It's so wow. amazing. <laughs> New. And I have to be very careful not to move my arms too much. But, oh my gosh! <laughs> uh, that was made by our amazingly talented Jewel. Yeah, it Hope you guys good. like it! <laughs> it's so cool! <gasps> okay, I'm looking at it on my phone and I'm freaking out because it looks so good. Alright, and then um, we had another announcement. Maddie, did you want to take that one? Yes. Um, just a big old shout out to our big old fan, Mickey, for writing that huge, huge post about all their vowel theories. I'm still in the process of reading it, but it is real awesome. And for doing timestamps and stuff like that, Mickey's just the coolest. Mickey is truly one of D20 Era's like, number one fans, next to Kate. <laughs> um, all right. Anything else? That we've got. Um, I will just let you guys know that I'm feeling a little under the weather, so I apologize. Um, but we're still gonna make it super fun. It's gonna be a nice chill session. So all right. So last we left off, the group had just murdered people. Um, so <laughs> uh I thought that would be funny. It didn't it, it fell flat in my head too, and I just was like, I'll still say it. Nope. Um, so last we left off, the gang recently got back to Balashi from a nice travel abroad to uh, for a mission from their guild. Um, when they got back, Augie um, recognized some people and went to go and try and talk to them. And in the process, the people recognized and started attacking. Um, and the group came to de their defense. Um, to the defense of their part, fellow party members, almost uh, killing Augie multiple times um, and then going to, um, which ended up in the murder of two of them and the escape of the third. Shortly after, they were arrested and brought to prison where they were broken out by uh, fellow members of their guild legally, like they know where they are, and are now back at the guild hall after having a nice long discussion with Nali about how to get out of this situation and some interesting pranks happening. The gang is going to take um, a two day time skip um, to jump ahead. And at the end of those two days is act it coincides with the end of the cycle, which is the current cycle of the White Crow and welcoming in the new cycle of the Cloven Elk. So, um, for those two days, uh, whoever wants to start, if you have anything that you'd like to accomplish or do, we can do some roles and go for it. Um, Val is going to spend those days in the kitchen with her new uh, co-workers, I guess, <laughs> and um, helping make food and all that jazz. Cute. Um, I'll say for that, if you want, I don't, I, there's not really like a, I've never really done like a cooking check or anything, but like, if you want to add a, if that ever comes up, a proficiency bonus for cooking, I'll allow that. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, whoever's next. Um, uh, I'm just gonna try and find someone who can uh, cast mending on Mimi's clothes that I, that she made for Augie that is probably completely destroyed at this point. 
that that is a good point um let's see mending asking around you get the feeling that um abington or quinby um one of the more magic you you probably you would assume that abington would probably be the best bet because he's very um methodical kind of like experimental versus quinby who's more yeah but okay. abington's probably your best bet cool so, so um yeah i'll go to abington okay um, oh, by the way, I was thinking that we could RP some elements of this. Yeah. Not all of them, though. But, yeah. Um, so, yeah, you go to Abington and very quickly, oh, um, well, let's see. And he kind of ushers you in. And, oh, goodness. Uh, that That is a, a lot of blood. All right. Um, let's see. Yes, Menzine. Um Would you like me to ask how exactly you got this uh, cloak in the current condition it's in? No. All right. Um, it should take me several hours, um, but I, I can do that. I will add that to my projects. Um, I, I'm assuming that you won't be needing it for at least the next day or so right i'm in the middle of a project yeah. or else i would oh yeah that's all right uh, just get it back to me in the next few days i absolutely will and the next morning when you wake up there's a it's a nice folded neat little bundle with a outside your door i'll, I'll put it on all right it's it's fresh it's new uh the blood is gone and it's been mended kind of like inch by in um yeah yeah cool because that wasn't a magic cloak it was just a normal cloak. okay yeah, yeah. so ah. <laughs> all right anything else no nope, that's it okay whoever's next i got some stuff <laughs> all right Okay. Uh, well, uh, I was going to train with Anslo as we had agreed um, after our talk with Nolly. Yes. Yes. So this is one of the things, if you don't mind, that I would like to sure. actually do. All right. So you... Oh, let me get my stuff for this. Um, <laughs> okay. While I'm pulling this up. So, uh, if I remember, you agreed to meet after breakfast the next day. Mm -hmm. So, you walk down around 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock in the morning, standard time for breakfast. Um, and Anslo isn't there. Wait a little bit longer. Gets to be about an hour and a half, like 10, 30, nearing 11. And you see as Anslo slowly walks in um bedhead everywhere eyes almost practically completely shut looking through slits kind of in a zombie walk and walks over gets, grabs a tray kind of still not opening his eyes and just slowly slides down the line gets a cup um like a nice big um cask of coffee and sits down and just Just sitting there for okay. a little bit. Uh, Ren's gonna wait till he finishes his coffee. All right, just give him Takes a chance him. to wake up. <laughs> Takes him a little. You, yeah, he. You can definitely tell that he is not a morning person. And when you said breakfast, his breakfast is more like lunch. Um, and so he's sitting there. Eventually, he kind of wakes up and he stands up. At stretches and kind of does a <laughs> up the back <sighs> hi good afternoon is it i don't yeah um so 
should we begin? Oh, um, yeah, yeah, sure. Let's, let's, I mean, I know you're on house arrest, but like, are you good for the garden? Probably. Sure. Great. And so he slowly walks to the garden, kind of surprisingly for being as tidy as he is very spry and light and um kind of hopping and kind of like takes a moment and hops over the fence um and yeah just doesn't even go um towards the door just hops over the fence um and as you walk through or are about to step through the door you notice a small little silver wire about two inches off the ground. Um, I mean, I'll step over it, I guess. Okay. So you just step over it and he goes, huh. All right. Pretty good. Pretty good. You're (laughs) perceptive. He goes, huh. But that's only half of what you need. I see that you know how to spot these, but do you know how to do anything with them? Do you know do you know how to pick a lock? You know how to disable these? You know anything about that? Um I've picked the occasional lock, but I have a feeling that was more beginner's luck than anything. I would like some expertise. Let's start with that. And so you spend the rest of the day, um, of the first day, I'm guessing uh, that you might want to do this for a couple of years, but um, you spend the first day kind of, and he's slowly showing you the ropes, slowly um, showing you to how to undo the lock. He breaks you down, breaks down like the thieves tools and breaks down everything. And he kind of is showing you how to do things. Um, can you roll a dexterity check for me, please? Sure thing. Uh, ooh, that's a hot 13. 13? So by the end of it, at the end of the day, it takes you a few minutes, but you're able to, after, you kind of get a little frustrated. And after a little second, it, um, you're able to break through the practice locks that he's given you slowly, one by one by one. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. And are you doing this for both days? Yeah, I'll I'll do it for as much time as he's willing to spend training me. Um, the next day he kind of teaches you, um, how to find the right shadows and things. Um, on the first day, he's more focused on like your technical strength, but then this one is more about kind of the fluidity that you need, um, watching for when the coast is clear and you spend the rest of the day, um, not just outside in the garden, but also inside kind of trailing people, ducking around corners, um, setting off, setting off a couple, he uses you to, for a couple pranks, um, actually. So at one point he just, he pulls out of this bag. It's, it looks like almost like a, a round poultice Mm. kind of thing. And he goes, he hands it to you and he says, okay, so what I want you to do, you're going to go to Abington's room. Just slightly, just put that in there and then light it. Just, and he kind of shows you there's like a little trail leading off of it. He goes, light it right there and get out. You can do it. I think so. I have faith in you, Padawan. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to need you to make me a stealth check. Uh, 17. 17? Okay. You carefully kind of go towards one of the doors nonchalantly walking at first and you watch as a door starts to creak open and you quickly go against the wall right as it opens and closes you behind it. Don't seem to have noticed you. Um, then you slowly continue making your way up the stairs towards Abington's room. Open the door. 
slide it in there. Slide it. Shut the door. And are you just standing there or are you? Uh, he said to get out of there, so I'm gonna I'm gonna get, you know, as far away as I can. <laughs> um the rest of you also would hear this, but you hear a dull a dull thud as a, supposedly this thing goes off and what you see, you see the door bang open and you see smoke and then the stench hits you. It, it, it smells like sewers and it smells like rotting and sewage and just like compost and everything just vile that has just been contained in this small little thing for several, what smells like for decades and decades. But um, Anslo is there and he goes, nice job. You've earned this and hands you a clothespin. Cool. I'll take it. Pin it to He's got throat. it. He's got it uh, up on his nose. Uh, but yeah, you take it and you kind of oh, like a clothes pin. Okay, I thought it was like a okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll do the same. Oh. Thing. Yeah. Oh, it's like Boy Scouts. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Little pins. Um. Yeah. Okay. Um. So I did have a couple other things. If that's okay, we don't have to RP yep. them necessarily. Um. So both nights um, after Nora has fallen asleep. And before I meditate, I'll do two things. I'll try to commune with Moon Lady. Okay. <laughs> so just, so roll, just... roll a percentile. Oh, uh, shit. E 20%, I guess. Okay. Uh, both nights? Uh, second night, 80. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, how do you try and commune to her? I would just like do how Augie does and he's trying to talk to Helm and just sort of quietly maybe look at the moon, that might help. Uh, maybe even like, I don't know if I'm allowed to, but stealth outside and climb a tree, stare at the moon so I'm alone and just sort of say like, uh, moon, moon lady? Um, La Lady Silverhair, are you there? Uh, we have, we have some questions. Ma'am? You wait for a moment. For another moment. And don't hear or feel anything different. But on the second night, you do feel, um, you don't necessarily dream, um, but you, as you're meditating, you feel kind of a warmth and a glow from kind of just your, like the center of your chest. And for a moment, you get out of that meditative state and you notice that there's just a gentle moonbeam just shining in through the window. But no one's speaking to me. No. Okay. Well, at least I know she's there. Uh, <laughs> okay. The other thing that he was going to do before he went to sleep was the thing. Both nights. Yes. Thing both nights? All right. Yes. So that's that's three at this point, right? That is, that is three. Okay. Yeah. I think that's, that's what we arranged. Yeah. Do you have that information or? Yes. Okay. Awesome. Um, there was one other, <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no, <laughs> no. one it's, other it's thing. Fine. Uh, I, I wanted to go see Abington, uh, and see if okay. he could, um, put some kind of enchantment on my cloak similar to Nora's. Um, okay. except I was hoping he could put some kind of thing that let me use disguise self. Ooh. Okay. Um, so you go and make this request. He goes, oh, um, yeah, yeah, it sounds like an interesting challenge. Um, 
I will say an enchantment of that size and that caliber would be very expensive. Um, it probably take several weeks, if not months. Um, I don't know if I have the necessary materials and he's kind of like rummaging through his stuff. Was, no, disguise self. Is this a, um, a spell that you yourself know? No, it, it isn't. Um, some of our party knows it. I don't know if that helps. Perhaps. If, Would it be easier if you cast it on a ring or something smaller? Huh. Maybe. Y- yes, I-, I could see it going like that. However, it's still... I, I... It's curious because I've never really seen... Well, I have in my own laboratory, but condensing a, a spell into a, a physical form, it's not exactly as easy as you might think. Enchanting is, in it's easy and simple and natural, but at the same time very difficult because it's, it's taking, it takes an immense amount of energy to convert from kind of more of a ritual type magic and, and deeply match into a more condensed form. It's, it's almost, there's fusion and fission that's involved with it 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 would take me several weeks Hmm. I'm not sure it would be here in several weeks and I was kind of hoping to use it that Uh, is fair hmm. well nevertheless I can start working on that as, as a project and if you manage to still be with us I would be happy to attempt right. that. Well, I have a feeling I'm going to need my cloak, but you can take this this ring for now uh, instead of instead of enchanting my cloak. Could you enchant that ring? Yes, yes. Uh, does the ring do anything? No, it's just a family heirloom. All right. Um, I will say there is a very small chance that I may end up hurting the ring somehow. Is that... Not a problem. You said it's a failure. Don't worry about it. Any? I've got more. <laughs> All right. Uh, just that he mean does, I- he kind of, he, you say that and he kind of, <laughs> like, in, a, in like a sure Jan kind of. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Uh, we can talk about payment whenever the enchantment is done or do you require a deposit? Uh, a, a deposit would be nice just to get the materials but okay. maybe just of, of 50 gold No gold. problem yeah. yes, Thank you That doesn't cover all of it but it will certainly lighten the load Thank you Um. Okay much appreciated. That's it. There's all my That's stuff. <laughs> all right. Uh, Tam or Nora, one of you guys. Um, Nora's going to primarily spend those two days in the library researching the riddle that the uh, silverhead lady gave Ren regarding her location and basically just trying to figure out if she can work it out. Okay. Make an investigation check and add your proficiency bonus. Okay. I will say, because if you're doing research. Well, I'm already proficient in investigation. That's, yeah, that's fine. I But, so, my thinking is it's research, which yeah. I'm treating as slightly different from investigation. Okay. So you've got the investigation plus the proficiency, and then I'm letting you add an additional proficiency on that because it's specifically oh. with books and stuff, which you're really good at. So that's going to be uh, 24. Okay. Um, looking carefully, with a, a 24, um, you don't get 
necessarily there's not like an exact like oh of course this riddle means this however Mm -hmm. you do start to do research and you discover that there are many caves and cavernous and underground sacred places in um, the higher areas of Snovsk and up into the icier parts of the region if you're thinking you're thinking with uh, land and snow you begin thinking of the mountain peaks and the mountain ranges and so begin researching up there and you read particularly in um, old things about gods as well that there were certain um, tribes up in those areas that uh, cloistered around very specific like religious nodes in terms of sacred ground and places that gods have been known to walk the earth. In Snovsk, there are several temples as well related to the goddess of winter. And um, there's also goddess, yeah, there's many different gods and goddess religious places up there um it's become a little bit tumultuous actually um as you've been reading that these religious places are there and many people in the region in all of elzaheim want to open it to be not in snovsk so make it kind of like unchart un like not in any specific territory but make it specific but then there's questions about what religion, what what should be allowed, what should not be allowed. If there's specific sacred things, should it be destroyed, all that. And so you kind of read it a little bit into the politics surrounding these places. However, despite there being all these politics, um, you actually don't know. And many people don't know exactly where they're located, only that there is holy kind of ground and sacred ground in a general vicinity so you get the idea that it's a little bit above you see in the map this kind of little point right here not all the way up here but right here that point yeah kind of like the the thumb of the mitten um there's a nice big circle in there that has a lot of religious places and kind of more magically places. And would that match the description of what she was saying regarding land and air meeting sea and whatever it was? (laughs) I have it written down. Um, Potentially. um, Again, it's kind of vague and you, but you get an idea that there is a very magical kind of place around there where, you theorize if God if gods existed, um, okay. that that is a place that kind of the line between realms gets a little hazy. Okay, cool. Um, and then I was also at some point gonna approach Tam. Um, just one of the evenings where it's quiet. Um, hey, so you know. Uh, This was a while ago, but we talked about, you know, I could maybe teach you some some of the little bits of magic I know. I was actually going to ask you the same thing. I thought you'd maybe forgotten about it, too. Okay. Um, Well, I found uh, a cool place maybe. Where? Where? There's an echo somewhere. <laughs> echo somewhere. You all are you all are having this discussion down a very 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 long hallway. Very 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 long hallway. <laughs> hello hello. I think it's Alice. It's definitely Alice because all of us are muted. Okay. How how about? Oh, hang on. Is this any better? Yeah. 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 (laughs) Nope. No. Nope. Is 
that any better? I don't know. We'll find out. I don't know. We'll find out. No, it's not. Hang <laughs> on. No. Sorry. I'm just okay. going to... I'm going to restart my thing and can we have this conversation a bit later? Yep. Oh dear. I uh, mean, guys, we got a new layout. We advanced technologically, so of course we have to regress technologically. It's in balance. We're all good. Exactly. Well, while Tam is gone, I will let you all know that the pranks around the house are getting considerably worse. Um, at first, what started to be flicking now is full on slapping, and it's consistent for all of you all around various times. You kind of feel slaps and pushes and prods and taps on one side, and you go, and there's no one there. Um, food is spicy, food is completely bland. Food, you eat fruits, and it tastes like vegetables, vegetables taste like fruits. Um, Gertrude is honest, like is panicked, and she at one point you see that she's crying and saying, I'm so sorry. And Nolly goes, It's not you, we know it's not you. And um, actually, at one point, you hear another loud, a, a, a subtle, like <laughs> of another thing going off. And Ollie comes racing out. This is at around one in the morning, so this wakes you all up. But Ollie comes racing down, banging on Nolly's door. He goes, really? Are you serious? Are you kidding me? And you hear, and this is all through closed doors. And she says, well, you started it. He goes, how did I? You're the one that turned us into a weasel. Well, you're the one that did this to my hair. No. And he goes, what? what? What are you talking about? We didn't even do that. And she goes, don't try that with me. I've known this stick before. And he goes, okay. I am just trying to get some sleep. I've had a very long, tumultuous day. It is one in the morning. Just stop. Call off the dogs. We'll call off the dogs. She goes, it's far too late for that. And she goes, and by the way, stop flicking everyone. And he goes, I'm not! And they kind of go and they part their separate ways. Um, pranks still getting bad. At this point, things are starting to be... Um, you find items in different places. You go down and um, one day all the tables and chairs from the inside of the cafeteria are now just lining the uh, staircase and they're all dressed in what appear to be different people's clothing, kind of stretched and made to like fit. So one of them's wearing a very nice dress, another one's wearing some bloomers and like a little bonnet, one of the chairs is. It's ridiculous at this point. Um, and some of the pranks are uh, magical in nature as well. You find that there is a table with um, a chair just levitating, spinning in midair. Another one is there's a bunch of coins that are just sitting in the room. And Nolly goes, no one touch that. No one touch that. I don't know what it is, but I know it's not good. No one touch that. And so now it's just, there's just a pile of coins, even now, just sitting in the middle of the room, completely untouched. And yeah, just, just a little bit of what's been happening over the past two days. Can you hear me better now? Yeah, as long as you're just careful about the placement of your mic. I will be very careful about the placement. <laughs> okay. Thank you, says while dropping it. Um, anyway, Nora. <laughs> um, so I'm going to take Tam to the music room that had all the instruments in it. 
Okay. Um, Tam, you walk in and, and a very dusty kind of looking room. There is a grand piano sitting in the center that has been recently touched and played. Um, on one side, there's a bunch of brass instruments, uh, saxophone, things like that. Um, there's woodwind, there's clarinets, there's um, strings that have violins. There's a violin, there's a viola, there's a harp, there's a fiddle, there's um, a ukulele. And just in general, it is littered with things. There's a small, there's actually also, there's a very small bed in the corner of one room, of the room, at the very edge. But does again, like that's, 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 does it look like the bed's been slept in recently? Recently, no. It's very, very dusty in this room. Okay. Um. Oh my God. Where did you, how how did you find this? Oh, I just did a bit of wandering. Um. But I, I've been thinking because you know, our magic styles are a little bit different to each other. So I wanted to um, you know see what the best way to teach you was and I think it's like magic is uh, how I see it is it's like learning an instrument you know Uh, when you first start learning you're playing it note by note and you're doing it memory and it's not really coming from the heart you know it's coming from you trying to learn but the more you practice the more it becomes second nature and in the end the music comes more from you than it does from what you're learning so that's basically how magic works yeah I mean that's how my magic works I I I guess I never really thought of it like that because I, I didn't really learn my instruments like other I mean, it was normal where I grew up. You just kind of pick up an instrument and you listen to other people play and you replicate it. Like, I couldn't really tell you what note was what note, but I could, if you played a song, I could replicate it. Um, But I know that's probably not how you learn because you're a lot smarter than me with notes and whatnot. But, I I mean, if it's it's all the same result, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think it's to do with... um intelligence is just different learning styles so uh so okay so if i might sit at the piano and they say okay if i play this and i play like a short a very short song and i go okay replicate that for me um i sit down at the piano Tam, well, let me make performance difficult. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> make performance check with disadvantage because this is not your instrument do I need to do a performance check? Um, it, I mean, is it just a simple little thing? Yeah. Or, or is it like... Well, it's just like an easy to replicate like tune. Like, then I'm going to say for the... Then I'm going to say no if it's just super simple. But yeah. for Tam, I'm going to need performance. Okay. What'd you get? A 12. Okay, um, it's a little dodgy, like you, um, da, 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 da. you kind of fumble around, kind of trying to find it. Shit. Um, you kind of fumble over one of the keys. Um, it, your um, fingers, as you're playing it, you don't have the nice rounded um, fingers that, um, like the proper form, so you kind of hit a couple of the notes, but... For the most part, like with missing one or two notes, you are able to replicate it. Okay. Okay. Um, right. I'm gonna take out my penny whistle and be like, okay, let me just tr- let me just try this, and then I'm gonna try and do it on that. Okay. I'm gonna say that without problem because you know the penny whistle, you're able to replicate it on the penny whistle. Yeah. And then I do my, I do another tune that's quite simple and I give it to Nora and I'm like, hey, try this. 
All right, now I'm going to need Nora to make a performance check. Yeah. Uh, that's a 16. 16? Um, little slower. I don't know, with the 16, you're able to... Sounds really good. Without issue. Okay. That's so, pretty good. Okay, so then if I were to do this, I, like, rub my fingers together and, and make just very soft, like, golden sparks appear. Yeah. And, like, so watch what I'm doing and replicate it the way you would if you were playing your penny whistle. Okay. Um, I, I try and do that. I sort of concentrate and imagine as if I was kind of, I like, put my hand as if I'm, like, doing the fingers on a penny whistle maybe, and, and try, but imagine sparks. Okay. Um, after a minute... It, it takes you, you're playing it and it doesn't work. And you play it again and you focus really hard and you play it and you play the notes that you use to cast um, Minor Illusion and you can Minor Illusion Sparks. Oh my God. <laughs> I do it a bit more. How, we, I, okay, oh, oh, okay, wow. Um, nice. That's pretty cool. I will <laughs> say, I will say you... At Tam, you know minor illusion. Minor illusion. Oh shit! Lol. Sorry, I thought I didn't realize I had that kind of. Be like, oh yeah, I can do this. No worries. Um, No worries. But yeah, you're still um, really proud, nonetheless. Like you're still really excited (laughs) that you're able to replicate what you assume is what. I mean, can you? Did you ever learn to play the piano? You seem really good at it. Oh yeah, I've been playing since I was tiny. Who taught you? Um, well, my dad did. He uh, he used to be a musician. <laughs> um, really? Yeah, he he was uh he was in Hegel for a while actually. Um, have you ever heard him play? Maybe <laughs> I don't know. It was a long time ago, and then he had to you know uh, work in the library. It, it's a really long story. Um, yeah, no, I, I learned from him. No, I suppose if you've already, because you were already, always going to be a bookkeeper, right? There's no, there was no room for you to have artistic pursuits. I, uh, I didn't really think about it. Uh, I mean. There was this really old piano at the back of the library that was like battered, but you know, that's what I learned on. And and then yeah, I I was I wasn't always well. I I was gonna be the keeper of books, you know, when I got older. Um, Is that still what you want to do? Do you want to find another library and be another keeper of books? Like at the end of the day. Uh, I don't know. It's, I'm I'm good at it, I guess. Uh, but I guess if I don't know what I'm doing right now, it's it's kind of maybe if we don't die or get executed, maybe if we don't. If yeah, I. It's looking likely at the moment. <laughs> maybe I if we know. end up saving the world, maybe then I'll find a library to look after it again but until then I don't know well I will come and play in your library and disturb all of your nice readers mm, oh mm, okay mm, yeah I'll play really softly it'll be like kind of s- soft it, you, they won't even notice it it'll, it'll help them read I'm sure okay okay I'm gonna I'm gonna stay in here for a while if that's okay Sure, I gotta get back to uh, research anyway. Okay, all right. Thanks, Nora. Okay. Um, yeah, Tam's gonna stay in there for a while, um, and she's just gonna make her way around all the different sections of instruments <laughs> and like play all of them, um, and she'll get to- Make an, ar- make an Arcana yeah. check for me, please. That 
that's a nine. Um, with some of them, every now and then, occasionally you pick them up and you feel like a slight magical aura just from your fingertips. Like there's some that just feel good as you're playing it. There's one that you just can feel like the vibrant energy. There's one, as soon as you um, strum it, it just, it carries out and you feel as though it reverberates just in a very nice, clean way. Can I like spend some time to try and find one that is like the best at that? Sure. Um, yeah, so Lee, as you make your way across the room, eventually um, you, you find the fiddle. Yeah. So if I pick it up and very hesitantly play a few notes. It as soon as you you try uh, plucking and as soon as you pluck the first thing it it fills you the dread that is kind of filled you filled with also is filled with this like warmth and this vibrancy. And it, it feels almost as though it's an extension of your own magical ability, kind of. I put it down very abruptly. Um, and then kind of, um, I suppose, try and find, like, a, a bag that I can put it in. Okay, make an investigation check. seven um takes you a few minutes um balashi is the kind of place where they charge you at, at the grocery store if you don't bring your own bag so don't really have the bag but yeah but eventually you find one that's just like a small haversack kind of thing okay i put it in the bag and then i take the bag <laughs> and okay. yeah yeah. Um and bef- yeah, yeah, that's yeah. And I uh, leave after maybe like an hour. Okay. Okay. All right. Anything else you wanted to do in those two days, Nora? Um I did actually want to quickly visit the kitchens. Okay. Um I'm just going to like poke my head in. Um I don't know if there's more than one person there because I remember. Uh, you really see Val? <laughs> hey, uh, do you know where uh, everyone else is who, who works here? Um, do I know where everybody else is that works there? Yes, you do. Improv it. <laughs> <laughs> My two worst fears. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, I think uh, Gertrude just stepped out to get some more vegetables from the garden, and I'm not quite sure where the sous chef is. He just oh okay. Um, did you did you need some food? No, I had something to give him actually. Um, I was just gonna ask him a few questions. Well. Gertrude will be back probably in a couple of minutes. It isn't very long to pick some tomatoes. But if you want, you can try to sample some of our, our, our lovely vegetables and like hold up the, the um like the cutting board I have that's got minced like a ton of vegetables all over it. You're very good at doing that. Can I ask why you're you're in the kitchen? I missed it. I missed cooking. You cook a lot? Back home? Kind of, yeah. Wasn't exactly where I grew up, but where I lived for most of my life, I did. I cooked. I used to garden, I used to cook. I used to bake. I wasn't really good at baking, though. I could never get the hang of that either. <laughs> Yeah, I always um, I always burnt everything. I tried to make a blueberry crisp one time, and I just ugh, almost I pulled always, it out. 
I was better at the bread, you know, like you get some uh, anger out. Anyway, um, I'm just gonna like hang around for a bit until Gertrude gets back. I'm gonna All right. continue to dice and mix and probably Maybe throw it into a pot I'll, for some I'll dice some vegetables whilst I wait. All right. Um, after a few minutes, Gertrude comes back in and goes, Oh, Val, you're. Oh, that. Why? Why? Um, oh, Val, look, we're very excited. Oh, why, hello there. Hi, are you coming to help too? I can I always have... use the help. Yeah, I. Yeah, um... If not, then I um I actually had something to give you, and I'm gonna hand her the spices I bought back in the Underdark. <gasps> oh wow, my wow! What, what is I th is that? Is that turmeric? That's wonderful. That's delightful. Uh, and kind of like oh, it's like you brought like some cardamom seeds and some good stuff. I just um. You know, I know that the people in, in the kitchens uh, or the people who work in a household usually know know a lot of what goes on here, you know. Um, Still smelling the spice. Oh, oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, um, I just, I was wondering if, if you'd noticed anything weird going on in the house and if you knew anything about it. Oh, you mean besides all the stuff happening with my cooking and the shoes on the ceilings and the chairs and the tables and you you get the feeling that she's she's been having a rough couple of days yeah, I was gonna, like, yeah. like pat her on the back as she's like saying this <laughs> thank you Val. thank you <laughs> no i know that there's, there's been some pranks happening i i kind of meant something you know more sinister uh, with the people who live here. In it? Sinister? Oh. What do you mean? I don't know. Uh, I just... I'd like to know... I don't know these people very well. Um, and I trust your judgment. So... Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to know if... if if they're good people and, and if you if you suspect anything shady going on. I may be out of bounds here. I just uh, know from experience that, that the staff are usually a good good Do you know what I mean? Well, um, I will say that if they were bad people, I would not be making my cooking as good as it is. It would be much less seasoned. Um, in regards to shadiness, we are a magic guild in a world that is not allowed to use magic. So there's always some shadiness, which personally is why, I mean, I know what you're driving at. It was a long time ago, and I'm not proud of the decisions that I made on that day, but they have done a very good job to take care of me since I've been here, and I greatly appreciate. I don't know how you found out, but if you wouldn't mind keeping it quiet, I've moved on, and I'm here now. Oh, oh I would never... Uh... You have my word. Um, you know, I respect you a great deal and I appreciate everything you do. I was just um, checking in. You see, like, kind of the intensity and um, kind of darkness fade from her eyes a little bit. And she goes, Good. While you're back here, would you like some ice cream? I, I hopefully, I don't think it'll melt, but it's been having that issue lately. Sure, I'll take some ice cream. Hopefully it doesn't boil. And she goes and gets it for you in like a small bowl. Thanks you take a look. bite. You take a bite. Tastes like carrots. But you just like are like, you don't have the heart to tell her. 
that's interesting. Um, I'm going to go bring this to my friend. <laughs> All right, have fun. Okay. I'm going to just and give it goes, to Ren and leave. <laughs> she goes back to chopping and she turns to you, Val, and just, such a sweet young lady. Mm-hmm. And then Val, like, continues chopping with her. All right. Anything else for you, Nora? Nope. All right, Tam, you are the last one. We already did a little bit of that um, thing, but anything else that you'd like to do? Um, can I spend some time with the giraffes? Like, just making them feel safe and at home and happy and stuff. Yeah, they're in the barn, so you kind of spend some of the day there, just like sitting in the hay, um, being with them, kind of, they have, like, I, I'm going to be honest, I don't know horses that well, but, like, if giraffes have, like, the version of, like, zoomies that, like, dogs do. Whatever. This is D&D. They, they do, like, some of, like, the, the zoomies kind of thing, and so they, like, run around a little bit. Yeah. Cute. Um, yeah, so Tam's just going to do that for most of the time. And then at some point when she's in the stable, she's going to cast Sending. Okay. Um, and yeah, I, and she's yeah, gonna I say, it. yeah, yeah, sure, nice. Um, she's gonna say, um, hi, it's Tam. Um, if any strangers ask for me, don't tell them you know me. Please don't worry. Um, I miss you. And then that's it. Um. You hear responses. Tam, it's great to hear from you. Hope you're doing well. I will keep an eye out. Make sure you're eating and you're practicing your music. That's all you hear. Okay. All right, cool. Yeah, that's all. I ha- oh, actually, no. At one point in the two days, Tam's going to go up to Val and be like, find her in the kitchen and be like, hey, do you, do you want to like, do you want to go into Valashi? Sorry, hold on. Um, I mean, we're not supposed to, but I would like to go back and say hi to Mimi again. Yeah, that's what I was thinking as well. And you can, like, turn into an animal and I can disguise myself. And it, I, I'm just, like, I don't want to, like, if you're nervous, I don't want to make you nervous. We don't have to do it. But I just thought you and I are probably the least at risk in, to, in, in if we got caught. The other three, I feel like there's a lot of shit there. Um, but you and, I, you and I can manage, right? I th- I think we could, but I don't I don't want to get anybody else in trouble because if we go and we get caught, we'll we'll be in a. I don't want Nolly yelling like she did last time. <laughs> well, we didn't hear Nolly yelling because we were having a bubble bath. Right, sorry, my bad. <laughs> You're no, fine. To, be, to be fair, we kind of hear her from like the other room, so I know what you mean. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. What do you think? The other thing is, there's a, it's, I think in two days there's like a mas- masquerade in town because it's just after the new cycle. So we could just go there. We could go then because we could all be in masks. But I mean. Just if you want a bit of adventure, I just thought I'd put it out there. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Shit. Anything so, else? No, that's it. I just remembered something. <laughs> okay. I, I took um, Melinda's bow from her. Yes, you did. Oh, Tam, you're, you're, Tam. Alice, you're buzzing? Oh, I'm sorry. 
Thank you. Um, okay. I, I took- will say, I will say though, when you got arrested, they probably took it. But, but I would have like stowed it with my other stuff and they didn't take my other stuff. You- I would, I mean, you were arrested and like, that was my bad because I forgot to specify that they took your stuff and then gave it back after you being arrested but how they know me, it's not ours <laughs> give me a second all right i'll let you have it okay uh at some point in the two days i would take it thank you i would t- <laughs> take it to nora <laughs> and be like hey hey nora Hi, did you like the ice cream, by the way? It was just delicious. Maroth enjoyed it greatly. Um, (laughs) So, I took this bow off of um, one of the people we dispatched with. Um, I was just wondering if you could give it a little check over in, uh, in case it's magical. I have very little hope, but maybe... Maybe maybe it's magical. <clears throat> Hand it to her. Okay. It's not like a load of fun for me to do, by the way, just so you know. I'm gonna draw my symbols on the ground and cross identify on this bow. Okay. It Wait, is a fire tech magic. Mm. Do you wanna know? If it's magical, or do you not want to know what sort of bow it is? Um, the, maybe the latter, just in case it's not magical, but it's super fancy anyway. I don't know. Okay, I'm a cast identify. Okay, it is a standard longbow, um, a plus six to hit, range um, 150, um, 600 with disadvantage. Um, it hit its 1d8 plus 4 piercing damage. Um, and wait, um, Nora, roll an intelligence check. What the fuck am I modifying now? Because it's changed. Um, that's a 19. Okay. You reason that knowing what you have heard of from Augie and just in general about Clea, you know that they do not like magic over there either. And you get the feeling that people in their armies would not be using magic for any, like for any reason. And it's considered treason in Clea to use or do any sort of magic outside of praying essentially mm. I'm gonna like look at the bow and then look at Ren like this is a uh, this is very interesting it says if you use this bow you become a little bit more of a dickhead so I can't really give it to you because like you're you're toe in the line a little bit you know I think I better keep it. <laughs> Go for it. Damn, I really want a cool bow. You realize that, you know, they don't use magic in clear. Why would they have it with the bow? I don't know. I just really want a cool bow. <laughs> but maybe she had a cool bow. Stop murdering people for their bows. I didn't murder her for a bow. I murdered her so she wouldn't... Well, I didn't even murder her. What a murderer would say. I think you murdered her, didn't you? Mm-hmm. That's not the point! <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Hmm. Oh, fine. I accidentally killed her. It wasn't murder. It was mm, manslaughter. We're all gonna die anyway. It doesn't matter. That's sort of a... It's sort of a worrisome attitude, but sure, yes, yep. No worries, manslaughter. I will take the bow, I guess, unless she's not, she's actually not giving it to me. No, I'll, just, it. I'll just put it in their armory if they have one. You're welcome, guild. Yeah. 
All right. So, um, Ren, actually, I will say, as you are on the second day practicing your stealthing, um, moving by, you manage to hear a little bit of a conversation that Nolly seems to be having with Loris. Given your freakishly high passive perception. Ugh. Um, but what, what you end up making out is you have to tell them. We have give them till the end of the cycle. Nali, look, Loris, I know, I know, but look, just give them one more day. We need to get started and moving as fast as we can. I understand that. Just give them till the end of the day. Just give them a day. Fine. That's it. Right. Well, Ren's heart is going to sink because he's assuming that that means they're definitely going to die. And they're just holding off telling us so that we have one more day of innocence. Um, Hold on to one more day. So Ren is not going to tell anyone. He's just going to carry that. <laughs> All right. So the two days ending, you wake up on the third day. Um, it's bright, it's sunny, waking up in the morning, um, you all head downstairs, narrowly avoiding the now ever slightly growing pile of gold coins, um, walk in at this point, you notice that none of the tables and chairs are, um, there. And you look up, and they're all stacked perfectly on the ceiling. And Gertrude sees you and goes, oh, hi, we're going to be doing picnics inside today. So um, feel free to grab a blanket, grab a plate, and we're just going to sit on the floor because that is what my life has come to at this point. And kind of just bustles away quickly. <laughs> Actually, over. looking up, Sorry. you... No, it's fine. Looking up, you do see um, Ollie, like, carefully using um, what appears to be um, some kind of magic that you don't know, just sitting, eating breakfast upside down from the ceiling. He goes, hey, guys. How are you keeping Rich your food stuck on your plate? This is a magic guild. Gotcha. Gertrude did pretty good today. I'd recommend it. I recommend the porridge. Um, Ollie, um, are you the one that did that with like the tables and the chairs? You know, I want to sound really cool and say that I am. But nope. And I'm kind of also stuck up here, so having fun, having a good time. Do you need any help getting down? Uh, if you have a way to get down, that would be great. Brian could like just shoot at you, you know. Um, always you know. On second thought, the ceiling sounds great. I'm so content up here. We're good. We're you good. Could, we could always take the blankets and make like a big net, and then you could just jump. You know, it's it's fine. It's I'll I'll figure it out. It's cool. Thanks, though. Okay. Um, I guess we'll have a picnic. Uh, guys, I'm like really 
worried about this whole prank war. Um, I mean, if Ollie didn't do that, um, and Nolly, Nolly also definitely wouldn't have done that. It's Anzlo, right? It has to be Anzlo. I thought it was. I don't think, I don't think Anzlo has the skill set to do this. This is a magic. Is it Abingdon? Uh, no. I mean, are we sure there is? Is it? L- oh my god! Is it Loris? That guy is about as much fun. <laughs> As yeah, but that, that's what I'm saying. It would be such a surprise. We would never expect it. He is pretty fed up. The guy doesn't look like he's laughed in the last 100 years. Like, no. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it I don't... has to be like... I don't know. I don't really care, you know? We're not going to be around for much longer. Same. Yeah. All right, yeah. Should we get some breakfast? Yes, yeah. please. Yeah, you go and eat breakfast. It's it's actually tastes very nice, um, but everything is just slightly too hot to the point where, like, every bite you take, you got and eat it. Even like orange juice is just, it's just a little bit too hot. No. Everything is just slightly <laughs> too hot. <laughs> hot orange juice. Yum. Yeah. Um. Everything, everything is just slightly too hot. Yeah. I think like I'll finish my breakfast sort of quickly and then go outside and try to find Moroth. Okay. Just like all uh, the yard. Yeah, you kind of see him, um, you actually find him sitting under the big tree in the garden, the big tree, he's kind of sitting in the shade, kind of in the shadows, it takes you a second to find him actually, even as perceptive as you are, he blends into the shadows really well, and so you spot him. Yeah, Um, I would have been like making sure he's fed and all that this whole time, but I I will make sure to give him his breakfast. Um... And I'll just say, like, in all this, I think something bad might be happening to us soon. And I'm not sure there's anything we or you can do about it. So, you know, if we're taken and you can't see a way to help, I want you to just go live as you did before us, you know, take care of yourself. I'm sure the guild will take care of you if you still want to be around people, but. He's gonna, um, kind of takes a moment, gets up and like looks like straight in like eye to eye, just looks at you. And then kind of just hit, like nuzzle you a little bit with it and he kind of sits back down and lays his head in your lap I'll just sit with him for a while okay. I'll say that's your I'll say that's the second part done okay of the morose yes thing <laughs> okay of the morose thing okay I don't know where that document is, but I will pull it up if I can. Cool. Yeah. Nice job. All right. So, um, some time passes again, pretty uneventful. Um, as is tradition with the new cycle, Nolly has decided that it's time to do a nice spring cleaning. Um, so she takes all of you out, outside actually, around near the garden. And she says, all right, I need everyone to close their eyes for five seconds, please. Uh, do we have to know why? Just close your eyes. Have a little faith. Shh. 
I was just peeking a little bit. <laughs> okay. Um, for those of you peeking, you watch as um, she waves her hands and the um, guild hall for a moment disappears and then reappears. Um, and she goes, Sandy, a little tired, says, all right, you can open your eyes. And um, it's back, but it looks a little bit different now. Um, and as you go back inside, you actually notice climbing up to the um, up the hallway back to where your rooms are. Not only is it pristine, but there are three additional doors there now. So each of you now, if you so choose, have your own room. I'm going to turn to the rest of the group and be like, this is a good sign, right? Because they wouldn't, she wouldn't give us new rooms if we weren't, if we were about to die. Maybe that's exactly what she would do. Oh, God. Thanks, Nora. Or, you know, it's a good sign. Yeah, I'm sure. All right, back to this room, and I pick the one, like, like one of the new three ones. Okay. Yeah. I'll I will say, you do well. notice that all the pranks are gone at that moment. So, like, <laughs> upon entering, there's no, the golden, uh, the gold coins are mysteriously missing. Um, and everything's basically just completely spick and span. Oh, I'm going to head into one of the rooms and claim it. Okay. Yeah. If you all would like, you can all head into your own separate rooms. I will take that room that we used before, and then I'll just, like, make it mine then, I guess. Okay. Uh, I kind of, like, <laughs> look at Ren. I guess. Uh, oh, well, I'm going to, you know, if we're all going into different rooms, I'll probably go by the library. <clears throat> yeah, if, if that's what you want, sure. You know, for like convenience, like, all the books. Of course. Cool. Ren will take the one with the biggest window. <laughs> all right. Um, they're all identical, but go cool. off. Cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, so you all claim your rooms. Can Tam time time passes back out? Oh, sorry. No, you're good. I was just saying a little time passes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, can Tam knit back out quite quickly and try and find Nali? Mm -hmm. Um, you find her pretty quickly. She's sitting in a chair. Um, she's, um, and next to one of the floating levitating tables and she's just got a drink. And she's um, reading uh, what appears to be like a pretty thick book. And she kind of looks up. Ah, oh, hi. Yes. What can I help you with? Hi. Um, I noticed when I was walking around, there was a, um, a music room with instruments. Oh, yes. Sorry. I, I yes, I, I should have gone. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry if I wasn't supposed to be there. Oh, no, it's it's fine. Um, it belongs to a former member, and I just didn't want to get rid of it, you know, for old time's sake. No, I'm glad you didn't. Um, I had a bit of a... You can, you can say no, but um, am I allowed to borrow, a, borrow an instrument from there or maybe buy it from you? I, either way, uh, I don't want to... Uh... That's that's fine. Yes, yeah, yes. Um, it'd be good to see some of those instruments put to good use. Okay, thank you. Um, 
yeah I know I, I mean like I felt bad for just I feel I feel really bad and weird about it but if it's okay with you then I guess it's okay with you yeah yes yes that's okay and yeah good good job on the spring clean as well also are, are we are we gonna die can I just ask uh, um I was going to wait till after the festivities tonight but um So, the short-term answer is no, because they are ask they are asking for your presence in Korea. Okay. Now, I sorry, I didn't want to alarm you. I just wanted to bring in the new cycle and give you all some levity, but. Um, they're coming in the morning tomorrow um, and just didn't want you all to worry. Um, we have an idea. It's a small one, but either establishing some sort of ambush on the road to get you out or I don't even know. It's asking you to be on the run and be on the land, which is a lot. And we were going to have time to discuss it on the road, but I wanted to give you all a stupid time. I I won't tell. I I won't tell the others until after the cycle, just because you didn't want to. Um, but what would what would you do? I know what it's like to feel trapped, um, and I wouldn't want that. But I think that there are legal options. Um, if somehow <sighs> honestly, it doesn't matter what I would do because I have lived a very different life from the rest of you all. And to be honest, uh, my outlook is very different than the rest of yours. So it's not up to me. Okay. Well, all I can do thank is you present for options and you can choose from there. But I can't make that choice for you. I understand. Um, thank you for your honesty, and I guess I'll pretend to act surprised when you tell us tonight. <laughs> she kind of sits back, and just take like kind of glazed eyes at this point, and just kind of takes a long sip of her drink. Um, yeah, okay. All right. Some time passes. Um, you all have lunch and dinner. It's pretty uneventful, um, except for there is a large cacophony of sound that appears to be down in the valley below. Um, and looking out, you guys look out windows and you see that there are lights and people and there's flashing things and the sun hasn't quite set yet, um, but it's, you get the feeling that it, in about an hour or two, so I guess you wouldn't have had dinner yet, but in like an hour or two will be sunset. I, th I think that's a masquerade party down there. That's what normally is done after cycles. Well, that would be relatively easy to sneak out then. It might be a last chance to go and see Mimi and get that bag. Should we really be taking risks like that? 
I mean, I guess it doesn't matter, really, ultimately. Our punishment probably can't get what much worse than what they're already planning. So, yeah. Unless they probably on sight. Mm. Anyone else up for going down there? For a party anyway, so. We've had a pretty shit couple of days. But we could make masks pretty quickly. Yeah. I mean, let's I don't know, let's do it. Mask. I don't know. Yeah, can we get some arts and crafts and just like, <laughs> Oh my off? gosh. Is there an arts and crafts supply closet, please? Oh now there is. Okay. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so it takes you a couple of minutes, but you do end up finding like a place that has swaths of fabric. And there is um, like thick sheets of paper, and yeah, yeah, you can definitely arts and crafts this. Oh my gosh! There's um, small little whatever to be fake gems and feathers and um, glue. Ren is gonna try to make like a maroth mask, like a <laughs> demon stag mask. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm gonna have everyone just roll like a dex check. Just to see, like, how nice it looks. Natural 20. It's a 25. Yours, <laughs> yours actually, um, if you guys all are sitting there, and Ren, you actually end up finding some wire. And um, <laughs> you're able, you start to, you find some black wire, and you make some kind of, like, curling swirl effects that go down the side and bring up into a mouse. So it's a very... Uh, it, it looks very almost as though it was woven from like natural like black branches in the way that it, it's able to go up and down and it's a magnificent display almost and it completely covers you and looking at it you guys don't recognize Ren at all and when he pulls his hair back yeah I'm gonna like braid I it got back. natural 20 as well oh my god, oh my god. what the Ham, hell what does your mask look like it looks like foo. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> it's all a gumdrop. Oh, God. God. <laughs> That's beautiful. So, yeah, you've got, like, the nice little kind of manatee-looking... You find some fabric and you stuff it just the right way that it looks like blubber. It just looks... Yeah, looks really good. Whatever on else roll. I got an 11. <laughs> <laughs> yours looks a little bit more like a high school arts and crafts like you started doing it really cool and then you yeah what do you what do you make it look like <laughs> yeah that is exactly yeah. perfect yeah glad perfect. i had this on hand <laughs> yeah that's that's pretty cool i have a masquerade mask on hit oh my gosh no all right <laughs> um <laughs> augie and nora what did you all roll I got a six. <laughs> I was gonna try and make a mask out of like owl feathers. It ends up just kind of looking. You end up just kind of looking like a bugbear. <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> patchy in places. Yeah. At one point, like you stick it on, and then there's a little glue on the inside of the mask, and so now you've got a little glue residue on your face. But you think it looks really cool. I'm going to try and make it look like a bear. It's a pretty cute... You find, like, you know, like, the teddy sweaters? You find, like, some of that material, yeah. and you kind of post it, and you even make, like, the little ears. Amazing. It's, it's pretty cute. It's pretty cute. <laughs> and it covers your um, scars nicely. Awesome. So everyone looking pretty fashionably decked out I'm also going to make sure I wear my cloak with the hood up yeah. okay. um, is is uh, the, the thing that Mimi gave me does that have a hood or it's just a it has a hood yes all oh. the, the cloaks have yeah hoods okay cool I don't think I can get the hood over the antlers but uh, <laughs> Ren will like <laughs> braid his hair back so it's like out of his face yeah, and with the natural 20, you're... 
you're unrecognizable, basically. Sick. Nope. Okay. Are you all trying attempting to sneak down? Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. Roll stealth checks for me, please. Okay. Val, do you have your thing? <laughs> I do. I do have patches on a trace, and I can't ask the staff. I'm going to use one of the, the slots for patches on a trace. All right. So everyone roll plus 10. Do I get Augie, don't oh. forget that you have disadvantage because of your God. armor. <laughs> Unless oh. you're not wearing your armor. You can I wear am it. wearing my armor. Okay, that's still good. Um, I got a 19 before, but now it's, uh, now it's a 15. Wait, now it's going to be 25. 25, though. Yeah. I got 24. 36. <laughs> 17. <laughs> I rolled an 18 plus 8 plus 10. So 30. Wow. <laughs> got a 17 because I, I a 7. <laughs> okay. Tam, what'd I you roll? I got an 18. Okay. So, yeah. Um, with Patch Without a Trace, not an issue. You all are able to sneak past. You notice that the, the house is actually pretty quiet right now. You hear a gentle crash in the distance um, in one of the, what sounds like coming from like the cafeteria place. So you assume that most people are distracted by some sort of prank gone haywire and you're able to flip out without being noticed um quickly down the um pathway and our shoot slip into Velashi the corner of Velashi it's actually pretty deserted where you are at the p- moment because most people as you saw are gathered in the um kind of main square you get that the idea that that's where most of the festivities are going on um Oh, actually, you know what? This is a great time to take a break. So let's take a break right here. So we will be back in a few minutes. Yes, we will. See you guys. The story of our group begins at sea. An elven ranger called Ren and his human companion Nora the Wizard had been travelling together for some time, whilst Oggy, a human paladin, was journeying alone. They soon met a cheery half orc bard known as Tan who was working on the ship. As the group began to make conversation, they heard a sound from below deck, and after some investigation, discovered a tiefling druid stowaway called Val. Suddenly, they were alerted to a commotion above as a number of passengers and crew began to climb over the sides of the ship straight into the ocean, compelled to jump to their deaths by a hypnotic sea creature called a Rusalka. The newly formed group banded together and defeated the creature. Upon reaching the city of Valashi, they began to explore. They met Nimi, an upbeat seamstress, and Tony, a Rakshasa sorcerer who owned an illicit store selling magical items. Illicit because only members of the local Magic Users Guild had permission to perform magic. Later that evening, the group attended a lively festival when Nora encountered a half elf sorcerer named Narl. The evening took a dark turn where the group had stumbled across a rotting corpse and were promptly arrested by the authorities. Unable to provide any information, the group was confined to a cell where they met a grumpy prisoner called Axel. Suddenly, the dungeon walls exploded inwards and everyone was broken out by the thistle winds. Axel's band of criminal friends. Now on the run, the two groups join forces on a particular mission to steal a special vase from the mad wizard Giltree. Upon breaking into Giltree's home, they found a large beast called a quaggan guarding the vase. The suckish creature called itself Fu and taught only in riddles. In frustration, Ren threatened Fu with an arrow, successfully prompting the quaggan to move out of the way, but he immediately felt guilty threatening such an innocent creature. Taking pity on Fu, the group decided to help it escape the wizard's irresponsible custody. When the mad wizard returned home, the gang defeated him together, and Fu took his revenge by eating him whole. Val the tiefling had a strange turn that caused her to be unusually aggressive towards the group, and made her eyes glow blood red, but it passed as quickly as it came. Our group then followed the thistle winds to deliver the vase to a mysterious benefactor. The 
they were led to a spooky underground lair where they met a terrifying black widow until she was revealed to be Nali, the sorceress in disguise, and that the Thistlewinds were actually members of the Magic Users Guild, and Axel was Nali's twin brother in disguise as well. The events had taken place since the prison break had been a test to see if the group were eligible to join the guild, and surprisingly they had passed. Our group were then told they could either face arrest or be sentenced to prison or join the magic guild. So they chose the latter. They all then made their journey to the guild headquarters where they were given lodgings and met other eccentric members of the organisation. The momentary peace did not last long, however. The gang awoke on the first morning at the guild to find Ren had left them, leaving behind only a letter addressed to Nora. He told her that she was free of any servitude she felt towards him and that she should continue on with their newfound friends. Ren was soon found unconscious in the garden having succumbed to a dangerous disease known as a blackened dream, which could only be cured with an ether flower from the Feywild. So Nora, accompanied by Oggy, Tam and Val, journeyed to the Feywild via a special portal to bring back the cure. They met an ally named Carly in the Feywild who guided them to the Forest of Contrast and they battled against four giant wood lice before finally finding what they sought. They returned to the guild only just in time to save Ren, who had been experiencing vivid fever dreams in a hell of his own. When he finally awoke, Ren and Nora spoke for a long time and we learned more about their history, and thanks to some very unsettled leaves dropping from Oggy and Tam, the rest of the group did too. It was revealed that Ren was the youngest son of the Angalilan family, cruel nobles who had previously ruled over the northern city of Highgash, until they were violently overthrown seven years before. Nora had been working as a family librarian at the time and helped Ren escape the night that the Ang Island house fell in their secret. The gang still needed to figure out who had cast Ren with the disease that nearly killed him. He informed the group that before being struck down in the garden, he remembered an old woman approaching him who was not part of the guild. He also recalled from his fever dream an elven woman with black skin and white hair who had said, Find me where the land and the sea meet the north and the snow. After some intense research, they discovered that the woman might have been Lady Silverhair, a drow goddess of moonlight beauty singing and dancing. Her chaotic evil brother, also known as the Lord of Shadow, was a drow deity of shadow magic and thievery. Both deities were involved in a battle among the gods. However, an important page was torn from the book, halting their research any further. The group discussed the possibility of following the strange words of the drow goddess and travelling north, but they knew how dangerous it would be for Nora and Ren. As Ren grew more and more restless, confined within the guild headquarters, the group made the decision to take on a new mission. Their task was to infiltrate and disband an animal smuggling ring that had been active for about a year, selling magical animals on the black market. The group they sought was a two-day ride away, so the gang travelled into Valashi once more to purchase horses. And through comically bad insight, they ended up buying two giraffes instead. The group then began the pursuit of these smugglers. Ren scouted ahead to find the smugglers' camp, which included cages and cages of magical beasts in their sleeping form of the smugglers. Ren managed to unlock the cage of a great black stag named Morose. However, the now awake smugglers ambushed the group and a brutal fight ensued that nearly resulted in the deaths of both Tam and Oggy. However, values had jured magic to change forms into a wolf and ruthlessly attack the enemies, assisted by the Black Stag. Yet Val did not seem in control of her jured form and also ended up attacking Tam, her blood-red eyes returning again. The gang eventually killed all of the smugglers except for a scout who they took prisoner and one other smuggler who escaped along with the group's two giraffes. Ren and Nora returned to the smugglers' camp to free the rest of the magical creatures, but one of these creatures, a harpy, flew back to where the others rested and slit the scout's throat. Determined to get the giraffes back, the group rested and then pursued the remaining smuggler. They came across an arcane doorway and after some debate about how to continue, leading to some inner party tension, they entered to find a vast underground cavernous city called the Underbrush. Just as they began to explore the city, they met a chirpy halfling barbarian named Nedda, who was on a quest to retrieve her lost memories. With some difficulty, they were able to locate a large crystal in the centre of the city that had magical properties which gave Nedda her memories back. 
Once the group had left the cavern, Rem stealthed back and touched the crystal himself, reliving painful memories that left him physically shaken. The group then found lodgings and explored the city some more, and around this time they also settled on a name for their company, the Tavern Alliance. While walking through the streets of the underbrush, Nora attracted a great deal of attention. Apparently she looked a great deal like the king's missing daughter Kayleen, who had been gone without a word for two years now. Brushing the stairs aside, Tavern decided to attend a festival that was happening in the city. Tavern and Oggy entered a race and tied in first place, while the others explored various activities and games. In an effort to discover more information, Ren showed the crest belonging to the dead scout to a citizen. The citizen then took the crest and left in a hurry. Soon afterwards, the king of the underbrush, Alistair, gave a speech to all in attendance. He had just been given tangible proof by way of a guild crest one Ren had passed on, but his beloved daughter Kayleen had returned. Realising the great danger they were in, the group went back to their lodgings to decide what to do next, and after lots of debate and some singing in the rain from Nora, they set out on finding the smuggler's headquarters. After some investigation, they found two carts and rails leading to a deep cavern, and after fighting some goblinoid creatures and a fire monster in a dangerous cart journey, they made it to the entrance of the smuggler's guild. Upon walking into the group headquarters, the group saw rows and rows and rows of animals in cages, and after some eavesdropping, they made themselves known to a group of guilds people. A woman named Sarah embraced Nora, calling her Kayleen and saying how pleased she was to have her best friend back. With some quick thinking, Nora went along with it, pretending to be Kayleen, who had amnesia. This group also included an orc named Gilm, who recognised Tan, and he said that he used to adventure with her father. Sarah persuaded the group to follow her to Kayleen's old room, which she hoped would jog her friend's memory. She left to find Kayleen's parents, and the gang knew they needed to figure out a plan and fast. While investigating the room and trying to find out what to do next, a goblin bard named Gilf entered the picture. He immediately saw through Nora's charade and offered to help the group. Tavern agreed to trust their mysterious new ally, some more reluctantly than others, and they retired to his quarters. As a courtesan with friends in high places, Gilf offered the group intelligence and support, claiming that their interests aligned. Which brings us up to now. The group are at a crossroads. Will they stay and continue to covertly investigate? Will they capitalise on Nora's resemblance to Kayleen and try to infiltrate the court? Or will they attempt to escape the underbrush altogether? Stay with us on D20 Era to find out. The story of our group begins at sea. An elven ranger called Ren and his human companion Nora the Wizard had been travelling together for some time, whilst Oggy, a human paladin, was journeying alone. They soon met a cheery half orc bard known as Tan who was working on the ship. As the group began to make conversation, they heard a sound from below deck, and after some investigation, discovered a tiefling druid stowaway called Val. Suddenly, they were alerted to a commotion above as a number of passengers and crew began to climb over the sides of the ship straight into the ocean, compelled to jump to their deaths by a hypnotic sea creature called a Rusalka. The newly formed group banded together and defeated the creature. Upon reaching the city of Valashi, they began to explore. They met Nimi, an upbeat seamstress, and Tony, a Rakshasa sorcerer who owned an illicit store selling magical items. Illicit because only members of the local Magic Users Guild had permission to perform magic. Later that evening, the group attended a lively festival where Nora encountered a half elf sorcerer named Nal. The evening took a dark turn where the group had stumbled across a rotting corpse and were promptly arrested by the authorities. Unable to provide any information, the group was confined to a cell where they met a grumpy prisoner called Axel. Suddenly, the dungeon walls exploded inwards and everyone was broken out by the thistle winds. Axel's band of criminal friends. Now on the run, the two groups join forces on a particular mission to steal a special vase from the mad wizard Giltree. Upon breaking into Giltree's home, they found a large beast called a Quaggan guarding the vase. The suckish creature called itself Fu and taught only in riddles. In frustration, Ren threatened Fu with an arrow, successfully prompting the Quaggan to move out of the way, but he immediately felt guilty threatening such an innocent creature. 
Taking pity on Fu, the group decided to help it escape the wizard's irresponsible custody. When the mad wizard returned home, the gang defeated him together, and Fu took his revenge by eating him whole. Val the tiefling had a strange turn that caused her to be unusually aggressive towards the group, and made her eyes glow blood red, but it passed as quickly as it came. Our group then followed the thistle winds to deliver the vase to a mysterious benefactor. They were led to a spooky underground lair where they met the terrifying Black Widow until she was revealed to be Nali, the sorceress in disguise. And that the thistle winds were actually members of the Magic Users Guild, and Axel was Nali's twin brother in disguise as well. The events had taken place since the prison break had been a test to see if the group were eligible to join the guild, and surprisingly, they had passed. Our group were then told they could either face arrest and be sentenced to prison or join the Magic Guild. So they chose the latter. They all then made their journey to the Guild headquarters where they were given lodgings and met other eccentric members of the organisation. The momentary peace did not last long, however. The gang awoke on their first morning at the Guild to find Ren had left them, leaving behind only a letter addressed to Nora. He told her that she was free of any servitude she felt towards him and that she should continue on with their newfound friends. Ren was soon found unconscious in the garden having succumbed to a dangerous disease known as a blackened dream, which could only be cured with an ether flower from the Feywild. So Nora, accompanied by Oggy, Tam and Val, journeyed to the Feywild via a special portal to bring back the cure. They met an ally named Carly in the Feywild who guided them to the Forest of Contrast and they battled against four giant wood lice before finally finding what they sought. They returned to the guild only just in time to save Ren, who had been experiencing vivid fever dreams in a hell of his own. When he finally awoke, Ren and Nora spoke for a long time and we learned more about their history, and thanks to some very unsettled leaves dropping from Oggy and Tam, the rest of the group did too. It was revealed that Ren was the youngest son of the Angalion family, a cruel nobles who had previously ruled over the northern city of Highgash, until they were violently overthrown seven years before. Nora had been working as a family librarian at the time and helped Ren escape the night that the Ang Island house fell. The pair had been on the run ever since and had fled south, as far from their homeland as possible. They were anxious to keep their identities hidden, and their fellow party members promised to keep their secret. The gang still needed to figure out who would cast Ren with the disease that nearly killed him. He informed the group that before being struck down in the garden, he remembered an old woman approaching him who was not part of the guild. He also recalled from his fever dream an elven woman with black skin and white hair who had said, Find me where the land and the sea meet the north and the snow. After some intense research, they discovered that the woman might have been Lady Silverhair, a drow goddess of moonlight beauty singing and dancing. Her chaotic evil brother, also known as the Lord of Shadow, was a drow deity of shadow magic and thievery. Both deities were involved in a battle among the gods. However, an important page was torn from the book, halting their research any further. The group discussed the possibility of following the strange words of the drow goddess and travelling north, but they knew how dangerous it would be for Nora and Ren. As Ren grew more and more restless, confined within the guild headquarters, the group made the decision to take on a new mission. Their task was to infiltrate and disband an animal smuggling ring that had been active for about a year, selling magical animals on the black market. The group they sought was a two-day ride away, so the gang travelled into Valashi once more to purchase horses, and through comically bad insight, they ended up buying two giraffes instead. The group then began the pursuit of these smugglers. Ren scouted ahead to find the smugglers' camp, which included cages and cages of magical beasts in their sleeping form with the smugglers. Ren managed to unlock the cage of a great black stag named Morose. However, the now awake smugglers ambushed the group in a brutal fight ensued that nearly resulted in the deaths of both Tam and Oggy. However, values her jured magic to change forms into a wolf and ruthlessly attack the enemies, assisted by the black stag. Yet Val did not seem in control of her druid form, and also ended up attacking Tam, her blood-red eyes returning again. The gang eventually killed all of the smugglers except for a scout who they took prisoner, and one other smuggler who escaped along with the group's two giraffes. Men. We are 
back. Woo! We're good. Hey guys, Woo! welcome back. Um, so last we left off, the gang just um, slipped past the um, people in the magic guild with a very nice pass without a trace spell from Val and her staff and are now on the outskirts of Velashi. Um, and again, it's pretty deserted because no one's really in that area. Most people are commemorated in the middle. So what would you like to do? And again, I'd say you've got, with the arts and crafts, I'd say, you've, and Ren being a ranger, you would know this, you've got about maybe an hour left until sunset. Okay. Um, does the festival start at sunset or is it already going? Um, it's already going. Okay. Um, and are we, we're still in the perimeter of town? Mm-hmm. Okay. Did we, do we want to check in on Mimi and see about that bag of holding before we do anything else? Just to make sure that happens. Good idea. Okay, yeah. So right. Yeah. So we're going to head to Mimi's. Okay. Um, when you get there, you notice that it is locked, and the doors are closed, and it is dark on the okay. inside. Can I track Mimi? <laughs> are there Go Mimi-shaped for footsteps? <laughs> okay. Go for it. Is that um, just survival? Yes. Or investigation? Um, I would say it's investigation if you want to... Y yeah, it's not survival. Yeah, make an investigation. <laughs> 13 13 um, there's a lot of footprints um, and it's also cobblestone and it's, it's the DC was already really high to track in the city um, okay. well, but you can look around and... I guess we just sort of keep our eyes open for her should we join the fun? Yes, please. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, um, walking towards Mimi's. Mimi's is pretty close to the center. Like, is kind of to the right a little bit. It's to the or to the east a little bit of the center. But for the most part, it's pretty um, close to the center. Um, you've definitely seen it's been a lot busier and you actually have to you manage to bump shoulders with several people as you walk in to um, what is the main square where basically everyone is um, all down side streets and stuff. There's food and games. There's a little craft station with kids making paper chains. There's a lot of um, circles. So there's lots of people selling toys and there's flower crowns and isometric kind of circles and overlapping circles. There's lots of pastries that have kind of these intertwined circles um, symbolized and there's wreaths everywhere. There's a lot of, um, there's make your own wreaths. There's vendors selling wreaths that look really nice. Um, they've got, white crow feathers on them they've got some that look like they've got um, branches and antlers there's some that have fruit on them there are oranges and lemons on one of the wreaths you notice um there's can also I... a lot yes no no Go. you finish it's fine no. i was gonna say can i look around and see if i can like a see any guards around and b do i see gilf Okay, make perception checks. Or make just a perception check. Okay. I... <laughs> that was a two plus, like, four, I think. So not very good. Um, okay. So, um, looking around, you don't see Gilf. Um, looking around, also, you even... Well, with the two. Yeah, you don't see any guards or anything. Sick. Nice. 
Could I say before we left, Mimi's, could I cast alarm across her threshold just so I know if she comes back? Sure. Okay. Sure. Thanks. Um, um, could I also just double check for guards because Ren would be doing that? Yeah. With your so, passive, per- not even, with your passive perception, um, there are lots of guards around because this is a big, like, party event and um, kind of basically everyone in town is gathered in this one place. Right. Um, it, people that are important, people that are, like, in the hierarchy, people that are less important in the hierarchy, they're all gathered here, kind of, this is the celebration where everyone gets together, and it's, like, a it's a big deal. Mm-hmm. Um, I will say, also, you guys do notice that there are a lot of items with these three curly green wavy lines Hmm. kind of like shaped like this um yeah there's just there's a lot of things there's bags and there's hats and there's um like someone even has like a face paint that has the three um across and everyone is also wearing masks as well not as some of them are very ornate and elaborate, going stretching up and out, similar to Ren's. Some of them are pretty simple. Some of the kids look like they took some parchment and cut out some eyes, but everyone's having fun. Do any of us recognize what those three lines mean? Uh, make a religion check. Okay. Okay. Um. Uh, that's a seven. No, sorry, nine. A seven? Nine. A nine? No, it's a nine. Um, it's pretty well known, so that that's fine. Um, it's a symbol of Evandra, who's the goddess of uh, change and luck, and kind of like is, yeah, is kind of. And also is in charge of um, travel and trade and just things in Velashi. Um, you've seen this symbol around before, actually, um, on several of things. She's kind of like the patron goddess of um, Velashi. But yeah, usually she's a she's a good deity that symbolizes change and luck and fate and good kind of good sailing and lots of times around this especially around this holiday she is celebrated and revered and kind of paid homage to as a way to please her and bring good fortune on individuals and cities um can ren just be keeping an eye out for mimi shaped people (laughs) See if yeah. you can spot her. <laughs> yeah. What did you roll with that investigation check again? My investigation when I was trying to track her was like 13. 13. Okay. Cool. Um, Augie's going to go get a flower crown. If okay. it helps, my passive investigation is 16. I don't know why passive investigation is a thing, but it says on D&D Beyond that it's 16. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Yes, it is. Um, okay. Cool. Good to know. Uh, Augie, that's gonna, like, you go up to a very nice, um, small, um, kind of dwarvish woman who's very, very pregnant. She goes, oh, that'll be, that'll be just, uh, too copper if you got it. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, too oh, copper. Would you like to choose what color? Um, um, what colors does she have? Improv it. Um, can I get uh, the one with the, the blue and the yellow? Of, of course, yes. That, that'll look very nice. It goes nice with your eyes. And she kind of reaches up and, oh, there you go. Oh, thanks. Seeing this, um, Ren's going to follow Augie and also look at the flower crowns. Okay. Um, could I get that? purple and green one there of course of course that'll be two copper hand it over here here you go 
Um, I don't know if I can reach high enough to get over your uh, your ankle. Oh, I'll well, just take it. It's all right. Oh, it's all right. It's fine. Okay. No, I am putting it on him. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, Ren, <laughs> as soon as it's on, Ren is backing away, walking over <laughs> to Tam, and we'll take it off. Your friend seems nice. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's the... Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you could say that. <laughs> he's actually... Ren's going to take it over to Tam. Um, you got purple and green. Uh, he's going to... He's going to say, um, yeah, this is for all the healing you did on me the other day when I d- died a little bit. Matches your whole flower cloak thing you've got going, purple. Thank you. I'm going to put it on. Does it clash horribly with my food mask? I think it clashes beautifully. Thank you. And like you don't need to you don't need to say thank you. Like it's it's just like I do it anyway, but it, that's really kind. Thank you. Try not to die because that was really fucking scary. Yeah. We'll try. All right. Me too. Oh, I'm I'm fine. I never I never fall unconscious ever. Bye. And then I'm gonna go and find. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna go find uh, somewhere that sells like trinkets or like little kind of pins. Okay. Um, yeah. Pretty quickly, you find that there's lots of the similar the conjoined circles. You find one of a um, a white crow kind of. And there's like the white crow ones are kind of on sale um, and there's a lot of them with this majestic um, elk kind of in silhouette form kind of posed and prancing kind of proudly um, which is the symbol of the next coming cycle okay I'm gonna buy five six of those okay um I'll say for six, that'll be a silver. Okay. Good. Thank you. They're 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 very nicely like they're homemade. Kind of look like um, shrinkadinks. Kind of like those little things. Um, yeah. Like a small a small kid is kind of selling them, and like he's going through. He's like, and I made this one, and um, this one, and oh my goodness, and this Pretty. one's really nice. This one's a- this one's for um, Avandra, and I think that it looks really good. Um, and, oh my gosh, wait, do you want more? I have more, I'm sure I can find them somewhere. You know what, like, mm-hmm. six is, you know what, pick pick six of your favorite ones and just give them <gasps> to me, and I will, okay. like, yeah, it's all on you, buddy. Yeah, so um, get you a couple ones. Um, one of the, um, the elk, um, there's one that's got like a bunch of really pretty colors and kind of looks like scribbled in. Um, yeah. It's it's a lot of colors. It doesn't really look like anything, but it's it's pretty. Um, there's one of a wreath. He gives you one of like a really nice orange with a little green leaf on top, and yeah, uh, yeah one of the white crow flying as well. Cute. I flip him a silver. <gasps> Thank you. Wow. Okay. Head back I, over to the group. It's right at this point that you hear your flower crown looks so nice. And <laughs> <laughs> turning around, you actually see her in a different outfit than you're used to. Um, her hair, which is normally just down, is braided into two um, plaits going down the side of her, and um, she's still dressed in pink but um it's much more of just like it's much baggier it's much looser um it it's she's actually wearing uh trousers instead of um a dress um and she's got matching shoes she looks very cute and casual but fashionable and she's got this really elegant looking mask that kind of turns into wisps 
off the side and kind of makes her look a little bit like um like a quickling quick yeah that's like that's the thing um I, I put my hand out and get her to do like a twelve just and she spins under you look so you nice look so pretty. I was really worried I you look so was really worried when you guys didn't come back for your animals but um the 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 the, the big uh the the sag was well he didn't like me very much but that's okay um but uh he didn't like it when i tried to pet him and so they left but i did no, they get he, back to you he, yeah yeah like it's um they they made their way back and don't worry the, oh, the sack kicked me once and like knocked me out so he doesn't really like anyone apart from ren oh well do you want to see everyone? Yeah, yes. yeah they <laughs> yeah so guys- i lead her over to the rest of the group you watch as um, Tam reappears with um, Mimi kind of in her hand coming back. And goes, oh my gosh, hi guys! Hi, Mimi. Hi. <laughs> I've been looking for you. Oh, your mask looks really good. And kind of looks over at Nora's and goes, oh. <laughs> it still looks really good. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I think, I think it was very nice. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Get wrecked. Dora walks away to try and find some food. Oh no, I'm sorry. I'm so. It's I'm sorry. Okay. It's okay. It's fine. Um, we were actually looking for you. I don't mean to bring business into a party, but we recently came into some money, and we were wondering if we could take that bag you were speaking of off your hands. Oh, wow. Well, um, yes, yes, the totally, totally normal, unmagical bag that um, can hold an adequate, normal amount of, yes. That yes. exact <laughs> bag, yes. Okay, uh, yes, I don't have it with me. We'd have to go back to my shop, is that okay? Or- it's all right by me, yeah. If you mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Um, it's just a really short walk. I promise it'll be fine. Um, and she walks over and as she's walking, she's, how, how did you guys even, wow, that's so much money. Are you sure, um, that you have it? I mean, Mm -hmm. it was, oh goodness. Wow. That's so much money. Oh (laughs) gosh. She's kind of like, oh, wow. I don't even know what I would do with all of it. I mean. I mean, I guess I could buy some stuff for my sisters and I could buy more fabric. Oh my goodness. And I could, well, I mean, most of it goes to paying for the actual bag itself. So it would only be like 200 gold extra, but that's so really exciting. Oh my God. And she's kind of just like skipping down. Um, <laughs> with, she's wearing like Mary Jane's and they're kind of like echoing as the cobblestone streets. Um, skipping very spryly through the crowd, even though it's so crowded, like she doesn't seem to be able to, you almost have a little bit of difficulty keeping up with her because it's just like a sheer amount of people, but eventually she gets back and she takes out her keys and there's a little looking like pom pom kind of attached to the keys as they jangle and she puts it in and kind of opens the door and she goes, okay, uh, so I've got it here um so i think it was did we say 1200 what did we say i think it was 1200 gold pieces yeah i have so i will give her 1200 (gasps) wow (laughs) thanks you guys and she kind of scoops it and is like this is so much okay okay um and kind of opens the cash register it's like a box and opens it Closes it and goes, All right, um, well, thank you so much. Um, here you go. So, um, you now have a bag of holding. Awesome. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> yes. Let me make sure. Because, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, is it a bag of holding? Let me double check. Let me double check. That's what we thought it was. <laughs> yeah, we just paid 1,200 gold. <laughs> I'd hope it'd be. <laughs> Kate turns around. Actually, it's just a plain old bag. <laughs> <laughs> With some nice embroidery on the side. 
trying to remember. Yeah, yeah, it is. Okay, cool. Okay. okay. Perfect. <laughs> All right, I will then. Oh, wait, is it the Haversack? Wait, it might be the Haversack, actually. Uh, whatever. Yeah, it's a bag of holding. Cool. Um, I will then take the bag and start, like, like guys, just give me the stuff. I'll just dump your stuff in here. Uh, I don't know what I have. I have a hammer. I give you my hammer. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> She needs to, um, she goes and she finds, like, um, she, like, takes out this little poultice and drops it in. <laughs> it's <fun>. awesome. <laughs> I'm going to kind of stick my hand and see how far I can go down. <laughs> it keeps, it, you can't feel anything. Perfect. Awesome. I'm going to, yeah, my disguise, li literally just put everything from my bag in that. Like, guys, let's just. Put our stuff in here. Is that should we split the rest of the money then? Oh, good idea. Yeah. So it was five thousand minus twelve hundred. That'd be thirty eight hundred. Thirty eight hundred, and then divided by five is. I'm not that good at math. Um. <laughs> I don't know. I. By the way, just a heads up that um, the bag can hold up to 500 pounds and up to 64 cubic feet. Cool. I think we get 760 GP each. Yes, we do. Cool. Awesome. Everyone gets their 760. Nice. Nice. Yeah. The most gold I've ever had, D and D. <laughs> yeah, as you guys are splitting this up in front of Mimi, she's. Just... <laughs> what do you guys do for a living? It's, uh, yeah, adventure. That sounds fun. <laughs> uh, wouldn't recommend, honestly. Oh. Yeah, it's not as great as it sounds. Well, do you want to get back to the festival? There's these really good pastries that they make for the cycle that are really good. Yeah, can you show us? Yeah, of course. And she good. ushers you all back outside, locks the door behind her, and skips back. Um, she takes you to, um, it's essentially what it looks like is kind of like a Yorkshire pudding. But again, the, the circles are conjoined, and it kind of looks like a Venn diagram. And it's got three different um, fillings. One of them's like a custard. One of them's like a raspberry chocolate ganache reduction kind of thing. And then in the middle, there's like just a nice simple cream. I feel like Jess is judging me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what? <No. laughs> I was I was giving a disapproving look to my cat. Not you. <laughs> Anyways, um, but it tastes pretty good. Uh, and Mimi buys it for all of you. She buys one for each of you. Nora's not there, by the way. She's still gone. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, is there any, like, elvish cuisine at the festival? Um, I mean, you can make it a, you can make a simple investigation check if you want. That's an 18. 18? Um, you do find a small slot, uh, like, um, shop off to the side with a what looked to be a young half elven woman and um she's got different things she's got like for some reason in my mind like i'm just going very greek so she's got like stuffed um like leaves and um there's like it's very i don't know like very there's it's all vegetarian kind of very good elven yeah there's elvish food Cool. Um, I'll just take like two of like the little parcels. Okay. Um, yes. Uh, that'll be that'll be uh three copper. Uh, the money. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna find the group again. Okay. Um, as you find them, it's starting to you see as the sun is starting to set and 
you gather in front of there is a very large kind of like stage looking thing in the middle of the um, town square, like in the middle and in it on it, there is this huge wreath that is very reminiscent of like the Rockefeller center tree at Christmas, the big thing, but instead of a tree, it's just a huge wreath. Um, and on the outside of the wreath, there are, it's decorated with white crow feathers, g- large, giant white crow feathers and um, what appear to be um, like white antlers and white baubles and lights and everything. And it's just in this, in candles and it's a gorgeous, like huge wreath. And in the center of it, there are um, hundreds of dangling transparent colored glass kind of ornaments which upon closer inspection are made up of what look to be tiny um, elks and they kind of the way that the light is currently hitting them they're forming a pattern on the ground of the square if you look carefully um, is a crow and as the sun is setting, hello, as the sun sets and moves, it shows the, it kind of shows uh, the crow and the elk in a race and slowly the elk is catching up and you get the feeling that by the end of sunset, the um, elk will have passed. So it's kind of like a simple light fixture um, and the ornaments themselves are made of bunch of different it's red and yellows and i'm very much resisting the urge to go into joseph and the amazing technicolor dream coat but like very there's a plethora of colors it's it's stunning in a way and it's honestly like it's just lots of colors and light um and everyone is starting to gather around at this point um you see up on stage there are several people um there's seven people in cloaks kind of arranged simply around um in a semicircle and a woman um uh, standing in the middle you it's the the magistrate um is one and steps forward and she says People of Valashi, as the white crow soars onward, we face a change not seen for many years. But we had best to dwell and reminisce on all the glory the white crow has brought. While the beginning of the cycle marks a dark time in our history, we also experience new life, new family, new friends, prosperity that would make even the great Avandra proud. And at this point, there's like thunderous applause from everyone. And yeah, woo! Um, And she kind of waves her hands. And she says, I have no doubt that as we come into this new cycle, we will have even greater chances to prove ourselves in the light of our patron. And always remember, look favors the bold. Take your fate into your own hands. And Devandra smiles upon you, which um, Nora, actually reading your book, you recognize that that is one of the three commandments of of Devandra. She has kind of like three commandments and that's her first one. And it's at this point that you all, I need all of you to make um, constitution stain throws for me, please. That's a two. Okay. Also, just a heads up, Mickey posted art on Tumblr. Okay, can you roll yeah. a constitution saving throw for me, please? Yes. <laughs> um, so it'd be five altogether. Natural one. No. <laughs> so that's a three total. <laughs> I put up 14. Uh, 14. Eight. Okay. Maddie, what'd you get? I can't tell if it's a six or if it's a nine. Where side is the dot on? The bottom of the circle? 
So it's an that's oh, a six. That's a six. Nine. That's that's a six. six. It's the that's bottom six. circle. That's a six. Okay. So everyone except for Nora, all of you, well, Nora, you feel this too, but you're able to uh, resist it. All of you feel this sharp shooting pain pierce through almost like your skull. And all of a sudden, like you double over. Ren, you actually fall down um, from the pain of this. And you all hear in your voice, you speak the goddess's commandments. Yet punish those who are compelled to follow out others. Strike back against those who would rob you of your freedom and urge others to fight for their own liberty. And at this point, you watch as a dark hooded figure descends down and into the middle of the reef covered in the the colored glass and the colored glass itself begins to levitate and move around as it begins to swirl around this person and um the completely dark completely hooded begins to speak um do any of you speak sylvan i do you do all right so you hear unless any of you guys are doing anything you hear Um, The rest of you don't understand this, but Ren, you hear. As above, so below, I ask you, O Saladrin, ever watchful, to break the bonds of these parallel traversements and bring us to a tangential point. Arise, our most non-Euclidean dissonant, in the hopes of a Rhymian nature and conquest for an isometric convolution. And at this point, the glass shards begin to circle around more and more and more. And they get faster and whip. And you hear the glass all shattering and breaking from the force and nature that it's traveling in. Uh And slowly, in the center of it, from this person's hands, begins to expand and expand. And where they are, a, a orb, almost, of black, dark energy begins to expand on the inside of the wreath. At this point, all of the pain in your heads is just getting worse and worse and worse. And eventually it expands to cover the inside of the wreath. You hear. Ah! The darkness goes out and the world goes black. And that is where we're going to end tonight's session. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you guys. We'll see you back here next session. (laughs) Jesus Christ. (laughs) What the fuck is going on? All right. I've been waiting to do this for over a year. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Uh, Bye, guys. Bye, Bye, everyone. Bye. (laughs)